Hello, this is Craig, and we are going to work through the last of the Microsoft Excel Section 1.1 practice tasks. So to, uh, I guess, set the lay of the land here, we have still the 1-1B file open, and we're going to follow up from the third arrow on the practice task list, uh, which says reopen the Excel expert 1-1A. So you're going to open the file however you like to do it. I'm going to use my Alt keys here and into my open dialog box. 1.1a uh, is there right at the top of my recently used list. So I'm going to select that and move it into the screen so everyone can see it here. So here's my 1.1a file. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a reference to an external workbook. So we're going to move into cell number A2 hit our equal sign to indicate that we're going to type a, a formula and we're going to go, I'm going to alt tab here into our 1.1b workbook. And we are going to move up from the inventory sheet and I'm going to hit control page up and then I'm going to hit control home because that is the cell that they would like us to reference. That being cell A1 on sheet number one. So now that we see that in the formula bar here, I'm going to hit enter, and that's going to bring us back to where we started on in Excel Expert 1-1A. So they've asked us to confirm our external reference formula. So when we select this cell here, um, we can tell that it's an external formula uh, just in the fact that when we look in the formula bar here, this part of it here with the uh, single quotation mark and the quotation mark uh, and the one at the end there. So in the square brackets is the name of the external file and then the second part is the name of the sheet. And so you can, when you're reviewing formulas, you can, you can see when they're external references because of those square brackets and that unique syntax. If I was just to make a formula to refer to another cell in the same document, um, you'll notice that this one just says equals D3. If I was to go to a second uh, page, separate worksheet in this workbook, it would have uh, whatever the sheet name is, an exclamation mark, and then the cell reference. When we go to this one, there we've got our quote, we've got our square brackets, and then the file name for our source file. So that wraps up the confirmation and that section. Um, Next, they're going to ask us to save this file. I'm just going to delete that because that was a little extra bonus for you. I will save this. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do a save as. Um, that way, if I ever want to practice again before I write the exam, I can find that original file and not have to download it. So usually what I do is I'm just going to add like a VCG, which are my initials, just to indicate that it's different than the original one that was provided. I'm going to save it in the same spot, so I'm not going to change the file path here. All right, so that is wrapped up. Now they want us to compare to the original document. Uh, excuse me, the results document will hit open, go into that same folder for objective one, and I'm going to compare it here to Excel Expert 1A results. So, you know, so this is again where the sample files maybe don't do you all that much good because in that same cell we have a kind of an odd formula in here. Uh, and when we look at it, you know, it does follow some of the same syntax. We have a open or single quote. We have a file path and then a square bracket with the name of the file. Now this of course is pointed to a 1C file, so when the author created this, uh, he probably didn't use the same naming convention as what we have here. But we're gonna be confident that we have done it right, even though our formula isn't gonna exactly match what we have here. So I'm gonna exit out of this one. Okay, and I believe I am done with 1.1A. That is the last uh, arrow on that page of the practice task. So now we're going to move on to the second page of practice tasks. Okay, and so what they're going to ask for here 
is we're going to go back to 1.1b. I don't see any other references to this 1.1a, so I am going to close this out so it doesn't bother me anymore. And now we are back into the 1-1b file, and we're going to use what's called a structured reference. Um, so with this file here, there's a table. And if you haven't worked with tables before, I'll just show you really quickly. Uh, when I click any of the cells inside this table up in the ribbon, uh, we're going to have this table tools uh, contextual ribbon tab open up for me. If I click design here, it's going to give me some controls for formatting, for adding a total row or other things, filtering. Um, but one of the things I'm looking for is this box right here. Now, if I were to create a table, it would just be called, I believe, table one or table two, whatever number that I'm at. Uh, in this case, this table already has a name. And so that is going to help us out when it comes to the structured reference. If you've not used tables before, spend some time on these. They're, they're handy. They, they have a lot of... Uh, uh, it can save you a lot of time once you understand how to use them. I remember when I think it was Excel 2007 first came out with tables and you type in some, some data and all of a sudden they would come up with a dialog box wanting you to create a table and it was it was annoying as hell for me back then. Uh, but now I am usually trying to create a table whenever I can. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, to follow the directions. We're going to go into cell G1 on our inventory worksheet. So again, at the bottom here, it shows that we're on our inventory worksheet. And we're going to go into cell G1. We can confirm that here in the name box uh, as well. See that it's highlighted up here. So to do a structured reference, what I'm going to do is, again, start with the equal sign to indicate that we're going to be doing a formula. And I know what the name of that table is. So I can actually start um, by using that. So we're going to do a sum formula, and what we want to sum is in the inventory. So in this uh, drop-down list here, I can see at the bottom there is inventory. And you'll notice that uh, it's a slightly different icon there. It looks like a table. Um, so I can s highlight that. I am going to hit uh, tab to pull that into my formula. And then it says that we want to return the sum of the values in the quantity on hand field. So in order to do that as a structured reference, I'm going to do a square bracket. Okay. And now, of course, I have a list of all of the columns. Uh, and we are going to use the quantity on hand. So I'm going to start typing in here. Quantity on hold. I don't want that. I'm going to arrow down to quantity on hand. Tab. Close off my uh, bracket here and then finish off my formula. I'm going to hit enter and I now have a sum of the quantity on hand field from that table. When I look in the formula bar here, it doesn't actually have any A1 uh, colon, you know, A33 type range references. Uh, it actually highlights this, this column and if I click into the formula bar here, it'll actually show me what column is highlighted. So tables are very handy for, for these sorts of these sorts of things. Uh, and I don't like how that's formatted. So I'm going to hit Alt H to get me into the home tab. And I want to make that a number format. And so now I'm just going to hit the K key. And now that is formatted as a number for me. Next thing we're going to do is in cell G2, I'm going to arrow down. Uh, when you hit enter, it may move down automatically for you. And we're now going to create a formula that returns the smallest value in the list price field. So the formula I'm going to use for that is min, um, which is going to return the smallest value uh, from a range that I select. Uh, open bracket, and again, inventory table. Uh, there we go. I'm going to tab to bring that into my formula, square bracket, and I'm going to use the list price field. So LI, there's list price now highlighted. Tab to pull it into the formula. I'm going to square bracket to accept that and then do my close um, bracket to complete my formula. I'm going to hit enter. And now I have my sum of, or excuse me, not my sum, the minimum value in the list price field. So I can quickly take a quick 
look through here if I want, and sure enough, I see some 120s. I don't see anything smaller than that. Uh, to use some table tools to confirm that, we can actually click this drop down arrow, and what we can do is sort um, smallest to largest. And when I do that, again, 120 is the smallest, so that ties in with here. I don't like that formula, or excuse me, that formatting. I'm going to hit uh, Alt H to get into my home area, and I'm going to hit A N and hit Enter in order to format that as a dollar sign or currency, I guess, to be more formula, forma, formal. All right, last we are going to add a comment named, excuse me, a column named discount and populate it with a form formula. All right, so I'm going to do it how the book demonstrates it, and then I'm going to fix it because uh, how the, the book does it, I'm, I'm not very happy with. Uh, but what we can do, and one of the handy things with the table is, I can select the cell, in this case it's going to be H5, immediately to the right of the table, and I'm going to start with my formula. To do it as a structured reference, again, I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to be doing some math here. So I'm going to be doing, uh, multiplying it by 0 0.75. So I'm going to go 0 0.75 space my asterisk key uh, for multiply. And I'm going to multiply that again. Let's put in my structured reference for inventory table. And we will select the standard cost column. Close bracket. All right, so now you can actually see it's highlighted that column just to confirm with me that uh, that I've selected the right thing here. When I hit enter, let's watch what happens. Okay, there we go. So not only has it um, solved the formula that I've asked it to, but it's actually created a brand new column inside that table uh, that completes that math for me, but it also follows it down or fills it down through all the remaining rows of the table. If I scroll down, you can see that all the way down to the bottom, if I click on that cell up here in the formula bar, there is the same formula I typed in at the top. Now, I don't like the, uh, the formatting here again, so I'm going to select that column. I'm going to hit Alt H A N to get me my currency. And so now it, it looks good, at least to my eye. The last thing it wants us to do is to name the column. And so I'm just going to arrow up into where it says column one there in H, cell H4. And I'm going to type discount. Now, when you are writing the exam, always make sure that you, you follow the directions precisely. And if they want you to name a column, um, you name it the exact thing that they want. I don't know how... Uh, intelligent that if I was to call misspell discount it would uh, take away a mark or not I, I'm not sure so always make sure you're doing it properly you can copy and paste uh, within the exam application when you write uh, just to make sure that you don't have any of those kind of silly mistakes so now we've completed um, what they have requested here for 1.1 we're gonna compare uh, I'm gonna alt and 5 to open up folder here and we're going to look at 1.1b results we'll open it up and we'll move it here so we can all see it all right so we have the same value here in cell g1 same value in g2 uh, look at that they've even for formatted it like i did when we go into column h here in the table here we have standard cost and and in this case you don't even need to name the inventory table because you're already in it um, and then times 0 0.75. So this is, uh, you know, we'll confirm that we've done it the same way here, but uh, professionally speaking, this is something that I don't like to see. So what we have here is a constant within a formula. Uh, and, and there's all sorts of bad things that happen when you start putting constants into formulas. So what I'm gonna do is go back into the file that we created and I'm gonna modify this uh, how I would do it if I was doing this kind of on my own or for a client. Uh, so I'm going to exit out of here, close this file. Now we're back into this 1.1b. And so here's what I would do to get that constant out of that formula. Um, I'm going to go right here into column F3, column F, row 3, and I'm going to write a discount rate. 
Okay, great. Um, I'm going to make that, um, let's go right justified. I'm going to make it bold so it looks the same as the rest of them. And what I'm going to type into here is that same 0 0.75. Lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to name that uh, just to make my formulas easier to understand. So I'm going to click into the name box. I'm going to type in discount uh, rate. Now you can't have a space in these, so you can either do these kind of camel case with uh, your, your first letter of each word capitalized. Um, you can do an underscore. Uh, if you prefer, um, but uh, type in something that's descriptive enough that you'll know what it means when you see that in a formula. So I will hit enter to lock that in. Um, and so now what I can do here, instead of this 0 0.75, I'm going to delete that out. And what I'm going to do is going to type in here, discount, oh, look at that in my list. Second item right there is discount rate. So I'm going to highlight that. Oops, let me do that again. I am going to highlight that and tab to pull it into my formula. I'm going to hit enter and now everything should look a lot better. Okay, so now when I look in this formula, I am going to see that it's now the discount rate times the standard cost. Now if you if you don't if you forget where the discount rate is, you can click back here in the name box. It'll show you all your named ranges. I'm going to click on that, and that brings me back to my discount rate box. So the advantage of this, so let's say I don't want to see what the 75% discount rate is anymore. Uh, what if I want to change it to 25%? Well, all I need to do is go into that cell, type in my new value. When I hit enter, now inside my table, all those formulas are automatically going to be changed. So with one table, one column, you know, obviously I haven't saved a whole lot of time here. But you may have that discount rate tie into several different formulas located in different places within your workbook. And it would be a real pain to have to try and find and change them all when you, you want to see a slightly different view of the data in your workbook. So this way we now have a name cell. When we click in the formula, we can see that discount rate. And uh, oh, look at this Excel even pruned out that uh, when I named the table here and just referred to it back as standard cost. Anyways, that's a little bit extra for you here today. Uh, thanks for your time and look forward to having you when we go through practice tasks for objective 1.2 of the Microsoft Excel Expert version 2016 exam.